joins us now to tell us more about the rally. So Tom, thank you for doing this for us today. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, let's begin with the rally. Uh, we were talking just before we came back. You said it just ended about an hour or two ago. Uh, how many people showed up? Who was represented at that rally in support of Edward Snowden? Yeah, it just finished at Hong Kong government headquarters. Before that, we were at the U.S. Uh, consulate. We had 27 local uh, social and political uh, groups on board, six speakers, including uh, three serving politicians, and over 900 attending in the terrible rain, uh, according to an independent headcount, which is all quite unprecedented for you know, an international issue in Hong Kong. Well, I, I want to pick up a point that you mentioned there. You, this was not just in front of Hong Kong government headquarters, but you also walked to the U.S. consulate. What happened at the U.S. consulate? Uh, well, we, we moved up to the U.S. consulate where we demanded the U.S. stop spying on private communications. Uh, Americans themselves are protected by the Fourth Amendment, but all citizens, including in Hong Kong, are protected by the eighth article of the Human Rights Declaration, our right to a private life. So uh, we handed in a letter to Stephen Young, the uh, ambassador here, and, uh, and then we moved down to Hong Kong government headquarters. Now, we should point out that a number of American politicians have called Snowden a traitor. Some politicians say he should be charged with treason for what he did. And yet here he is gaining all the support in Hong Kong. Why is Edward Snowden getting so much support there? Uh, well, actually, I think Hong Kongers are both flattered and bewildered that Snowden chose our city. Uh, he came here saying we have a spirited commitment to free speech and political dissent. That's what we wanted to demonstrate this afternoon. But in reality, a lot of the pro-democracy groups which are uh, represented today here are concerned that there has been a slow erosion of civil liberties uh, in Hong Kong since handover in 1997. So the turnout probably, you know, fed into some of those concerns. Uh, you know, only, I, I think, last year, a Libyan dissident was uh, deported, extradited at the request of the UK and US, and he was then tortured. He's now suing Hong Kong for that. So it's a little ambiguous as to how Hong Kong or Beijing may, may react. So uh, we wanted to show solidarity and support Snowden uh, here in Hong Kong. Well, as I say, some people view him as a traitor. How do you view Edward Snowden? Well, he himself said to the South China Morning Post a couple of days ago that uh, he is not a traitor or a hero, but, but a normal citizen. And that's the same for the people who turned up today. We're just personally concerned about uh, privacy invasions and, you know, we are innocent citizens using online services. Um, if he's classed as a political dissident or if he claims to sign with the UNHCR, then there is no obligation for, to Hong Kong to, uh, to extradite him. So. He has, you know, put his faith in the courts here and the Hong Kong people, so he says. So I hope we don't let him down and, you know, rule of law is upheld. Well, you hope he's not let down, but what do you think his chances are of gaining some type of asylum in Hong Kong? He said he's approaching the courts. Uh, according to a, a pre-handover uh, agreement with the U.S., Beijing has, has final uh, uh, veto power if he were to... Uh, be classed as a political dissident, but we, we want rule of law to be upheld. And, uh, you know, I, our leader here, CY Learn, has said no comment repeatedly on this. So people are a little concerned there may be some influence from Beijing. But it's, it's very hard to speculate what will happen next. But we'll be watching closely, and I'm sure we'll be rallying once again in his support, uh, depending on how the, the story develops. Okay, Tom, thank you for this. That is Tom Grundy speaking to us from Hong Kong.